You know, this has been plaguing me for, for, for a day or two. I, the news cycle in America moves so fast, right, that oftentimes you don't get enough time to process everything that's happened. You know, it's like an orgy. But I think, <laughs> especially over the coming years, we're gonna have to get better at taking a step back to fully understand what it all means. Take yesterday, for example. There was so much news. Trump was holding a press conference while his nominee for Secretary of State was being questioned by Congress, while the intelligence community was trying to decide if a report on golden showers was confirmed or not, <laughs> and the brand new Game of Thrones book came out. <laughs> yeah. And let's just say he took some inspiration from the golden shower incident. Hashtag <laughs> gold wedding. It's really weird. <laughs> really, really weird book. By the way, that's how we count where I'm from. I don't know if that's like a... <laughs> you guys were weirded out. It's an accent thing. Calm down. Uh, so, so, so tonight, let's do this. Let's take a step back and try and process one of the crazy things that happened yesterday, which was Donald Trump's press conference. Hashtag gold yelling. Mr. President-elect, go ahead. Can you say categorically... question. Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't be You're rude. attacking us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you no, give I'm us a question? Give you a qu I'm you... not gonna give you a can question. You can you stay categorically... You are fake news. <laughs> I love that Mr. Real Tan over here is telling people they're fake. <laughs> CNN, you're fake. You're fake. Next question goes to Bat Boy from the National Enquirer. Yeah, you're real. <laughs> yes, I do think Hillary adopted an alien baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, we already talked about Trump's anti-media crusade yesterday. But yesterday's press conference was also a scary glimpse into the future of what we might be able to expect from a Donald Trump presidency. And let's start by looking at the spectacle, right? Which is all Trump wanted us to be looking at yesterday, right? Trump shared the stage with what can only be described as Manila Mountain. These papers are just some of the many documents that I've signed turning over complete and total control to my sons. Good Lord. <laughs> That's a lot of paper. <laughs> so much paper. What is he doing there? It looks like a police chief showing off a homework drug bust. <laughs> it's like, as you can see, we found a lot of math. Uh, we found a lot of accounting. Uh, uh, yeah, but, but jokes aside, you have to be impressed. Look how much work he's been doing for America. But don't look too close, because if you do, you might start to notice things. For instance, the paper inside the folders doesn't look like weeks of contracts. It looks brand new. <laughs> yeah, and I know some of you might be hating. You might be like, you might be like oh, Trevor, no, you're just hating, you know? Uh, but, but, but you tell me, if you had real folders of real business you were really doing, wouldn't you at least have labels on them? <laughs> Donald's. Like, you know what? At this point, it's not even about the lie, man. It's about the lack of respect. <laughs> just take, like, two seconds to write down a fake label. <laughs> just write... You could even be, like, just be, like, conflict stuff. We don't care. <laughs> and the reason this matters is that spectacle is what Donald Trump uses in place of actually doing something which is surprisingly effective, because now there are people all over America going, I know he left his business because I saw the papers. I mean, what, what kind of sick person would bring empty folders to a press conference? <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> Here's another thing we learned from the press conference. And it's not something new, by the way, but, but it's a reminder. Uh, President Trump, he's gonna lie a lot. What I'm going to be doing is my two sons, who are right here, Don and Eric are going to be running the company. They are going to be running it in a very professional manner. They're not going to discuss it with me. They're not going to discuss it with you at all for eight years? <laughs> Either that's a lie or Donald Trump... <laughs> Actually, what if the only reason Trump ran for president was so that he wouldn't have to talk to his sons for four years? <laughs> Maybe that's what he did. That was the entire reason. Sorry, Eric, can't talk. Conflict of interest. <laughs> but, Dad, I just wanted to tell you I love you. <laughs> Bye now. Bye. Bye. Get him out of here. Bye. And by the way, by the way, 
the Office of Government Ethics has looked through Donald Trump's divestment plans. And like a python at a penis party, <laughs> they were not impressed. The head of the Government Ethics Office called the plan wholly inadequate. Stepping back from running his positions is meaningless from a conflicts of interest pr perspective. The idea of limiting direct communication about the business is wholly inadequate. This is not a blind trust. It's not even close. Yes! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you, soon-to-be unemployed ethics man. Thank you! <laughs> Thank you! By the way, I hope he ended his speech with his LinkedIn profile. Just be like, and you can hire me very soon. Very soon. But he's right. Trump saying his children running his company is a blind trust, that's like a veggie burger saying, I'm a hamburger! Get the f out of here, you falafel-ass piece of you're not a burger. <laughs> One thing that was particularly illuminating yesterday was how little regard Donald J. Trump seems to have for the presidency itself. In the past, U.S. presidents have always acknowledged themselves as being accountable to the American people. It's a crucial piece of what a president should be. And, and accountable to all people, including the ones who didn't vote for them. But as Donnie always warned us, He's an outsider. Will you release your tax returns to prove what you're saying about no deals in Russia? Uh, well, I'm not releasing the tax returns because, as you know, they're under audit. But every president uh, since the 70s has oh, had a required audit from the oh, IRS. Oh, the, the gee, I've never heard that. Released. But as I've president, never that. sir, you know, the only one that cares problem. about my tax returns are the reporters, OK? You they're don't the think only the American ones. public I, is concerned but, about No, that? I don't think so. I, I won. Do you believe that happy became president? No, I don't think they care at all. How great would it be if we could all use Donald Trump's logic in our daily lives? <laughs> get busted for, for free, on the freeway for speeding, you know, and the cop would be there like, do you know how fast you were going? You'd be, look at all these other people. They don't care. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care. If they cared, they wouldn't have gotten out of the way. They don't care. <laughs> but you know what? The sad truth is, in a way, Trump's right. Because the people who voted for him, they don't care. And the people who chose not to vote, they don't care. The only thing we do know right now is Obamacare. Obamacare very much. <laughs> Obamacare, man. <laughs> and the 65 million people who are actually the majority, they care. But anyway, <laughs> I, I just hope that the press keeps caring. I'm glad they asked that question, and I hope they keep asking it. Because without a fully functional press, the only one who's gonna be blind in this whole situation is us. Hey there, thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click below to subscribe or click here to delete the internet. Yes, you found the button. Please be careful. Delete the entire internet right here.